Welcome to Python tip number six. And in this lesson, what we're going to be covering is reading many CSV files. So I do this often when I have a uh, project where I'm looking at accessing a number of CSV files, something like this, where we've got 10, 15 CSV files, maybe 20 CSVs or even hundreds. And you need to pull those into a data frame. So we're going to show you how to do that. Uh, to get started here, what you need to do is you need to first sign up for the Python tips. That'll get you access to all the data that we're going to be working on and this .py file that I have open here uh, that's, in under, that's under 06 read many CSVs. That's the folder we're working out of. So what you do, you sign up for Python tips. That'll get you access to the GitHub repo. You're then going to hit this little button down here and that's going to pull in the latest information. Next, what we're going to do is load in some libraries. We need two libraries for this. So we're going to be using pandas. So we're going to import that as PD and import glob. So I'm going to hit shift and enter, and that's going to send this over to my Python interactive environment where it's kind of like a little Jupyter notebook. So if I click on this and double click here, um, we can see that it loaded these two libraries in. I get the nice little green check mark. Um, next, what we're going to do, we're going to move on to the file paths with glob. So the first thing we got to do is we have to collect all of the file paths here. So uh, we're going to do that. We're going to create a variable called path, and I'm going to point it to the folder here that I'll be working out of. Now, this is what we call a relative path. That means we don't provide the full uh, absolute path from everything from, and I'm working out of Windows, but from like the C drive, which I'm working out of, we're just uh, providing the relative path here. And that's gonna point it at this folder. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna use the glob function from glob, or, uh, which comes from the glob library. And what this allows me to do is take that path and then append to it uh, a slash and a star, which is a wild card. And then I'm going to look for any file that has .csv. So it's going to look in this folder uh, and I'm going to look for anything that ends, um, any file that ends with a CSV. So when I do that, if I do shift enter, that's going to save my path. If I do shift enter again, that's going to save this um, all files. And if I do shift enter again, we can see that I have uh, I see the error. I had the uh, the incorrect file path, so I changed this folder name. Um, it's 06 read many CSV. You just hit shift enter, shift enter, and you will then have all of your files here in a list. So great. Once you have your list created, then what we're going to do is we're going to try method number one. So this is what most people would do uh, in Python. It's not necessarily the most concise. Um, and it'll be a little bit slower uh, due to the append method, but we're going to create a list and we're going to do a for loop. So we're going to instantiate just a generic list. Um, and we do that with the brackets here. So we've got an empty list. And um, what we'll do is we will say for file name in all files. So file name is going to be a variable that we create. Um, it's going to be each instance. So it's going to go through one, two, three, all the way down all of these files. And that'll be each of the file names. And we're going to call pd read csv file name with index call equals none and header equals zero. Uh, we run that and what it's going to do is it's going to append to this list each of these data frames that it reads in. So we'll just do shift enter and now we have uh, a bunch of different data frames that are stored as different lists. So we need to concatenate them. Um, so if you look at this, uh, the length of the list, we have element the first element, which is element zero, is this first data frame. Um, this, this one's for Audi. Uh, the next one, if I do uh, one here, shift enter, this is for Chevrolet, and so on. So we can concatenate all of these and bring them all into one data frame using the pd.concat with axis equals zero. That would do row-wise binding. And uh, we do shift and enter. And now we have 234 rows and it starts with Audi, ends with Volkswagen. So it's got all of the car data now combined. Okay, next method. Um, so we see this method, it's, a, it's uh, certainly a good method, but um, there's a lot of typing here and we can actually make this uh, a little more condensed. So method two is going to be the map. So the uh, benefit here is you don't need to make a for loop. It's more concise, uh, it'll, it'll be faster. Um, 
So let's first run this line of code and I will explain what it does. So we're running this line of code here. It's just a, a one liner. And, it, and what map does is it takes a function. And in this case, we're providing what's called a Lambda function. And then it takes an iterable. So are all files. So it's going to apply this function to all files and it's going to store it as a map object. So uh, the function here, it looks a little unique. We're saying Lambda file name and what we're doing is saying pd read file name so this is the variable that's going to be passed so each of these elements each one of the files the file names will be passed as a variable called file name that'll go into the pd read and it'll just iterate through all of these files so um, the unique thing here is if you've never worked with the map function it actually returns a map object so if i do shift enter we can see map at, uh, and this will throw you off the first time you see it because what you need to do is you need to then coerce it to a list. You need to convert it to a list. So what this does is it extracts out the contents of that map object. Um, we're going to save this as li2 and then we're going to do the same thing that we did up here. So let's do this one more time. I'm just going to run these two lines here. Shift enter. Make sure I got my list here. And then I'm going to do shift enter. And there they're concatenated. Okay. So method three is kind of um, an even more concise version is what what's using what's called a list comprehension. So the third way is uh, very similar to the second way. It's just a one liner where instead of um, creating a Lambda function and using map, what we're doing is we're using this uh, list comprehension. So we st store this in a list and we're going to provide the function um, that we want to uh, create which is the same thing as we have in this lambda it's just, it just says file name and we're going to create that variable inside of this list comprehension and we're, then we're going to provide at the end here this for file name in all files so all files is our iterable file name is the variable we will create that file name will go to this function here and this will create our list so let's run it shift and enter li3 let's check it out and again, it's a list containing data frames. So we have a bunch of data frames. Um, we want to concatenate them. So we'll just run the pd.concat. And you can see now we've got 234 by 12. Okay, and there you have it. That is the way that you can uh, concatenate three different ways uh, to concatenate and to bring in uh, c multiple CSV files. If you want to learn more, I do have an amazing program that will help you uh, learn data science for business using Python. It's called Python for Data Science Automation, and this teaches all of the skills that you need to learn. So if you're not familiar with Pandas, it teaches you Pandas. It uh, takes you through an entire automation project where you use a lot of different technologies and techniques. So you'll learn pandas, you'll learn plot nine for visualization, you'll learn paper mill for reporting, Jupyter, um, you'll learn VS code, how to set VS code up, Conda environments, and much, much more. Uh, I even include SK time for forecasting throughout this project um, and you complete a uh, series of automated reports. Check that course out if you want to learn more. It'll teach you all of the skills that we go into much deeper than we can do in these art tips. All right. Till next time. See ya.